This is Packer and Durham on ACCN and Sirius XM Channel 371. All right, Mr. Durham, I'm glad you survived your double dip of uh, ACC Network in the morning and Falcon Radio NFL coverage at night. Everything good down there in the ATL? Everything's great. Before we get started, I'd like to welcome the Kings of Leon to the stage. Oh, wait. Sorry. I like the Kings of Leon, but not last night. Yeah, I am. I like the Kings of Leon, but hey, last night, uh, have we jumped the shark a little, just a little bit with this deal? Now, let me ask you a question. Well, let me ask you yeah. a question. Okay. I, I made a note last night, and it did not mm-hmm. take long. It, it wasn't after right. Trevor Lawrence. It was after the Zach Wilson pit, uh, pick for the Jets. I'm going to ask you, I'm going to ask everybody in ACC Network land. Okay. What is a longer walk? All right. What is a longer walk? Okay. You have two selections here. A, any NFL selection last night in the first round that was sitting back in the quote unquote VIP room to the stage, or B, any visiting team at Wallace Wade Outdoor Stadium as they go to halftime. <laughs> What what is a longer? I mean, you wonder want to know why the NFL draft takes seven hours? Because four and a half hours is the commissioner and the players walking from wherever they're going to the stage. Can we get them a cart? Can we just put them twenty feet away? Holy mackerel! I read two novels the by old- the time some of these dudes went from the VIP room to get their the annual hug. From Roger Goodell. That was unbelievable last Remember, me- Remember how we said that like, there's certain things in ACC history we'd like to be able to acquire the little white flip scoreboard from the corner at Carmichael Auditorium right. being one right. that Coach Smith used to use for game film. And I remember that also on that list was the uh, helmet cart that NC State <laughs> used to have at Carter-Finley right. Stadium. Love that. Okay. Thing. Last night, I think in Cleveland, it would have been appropriate for the helmet cart right. to be employed. They it could have was... driven like the NFL could have had the old helmet cart, and they could have had you know the guy there driving the cart, and he could have taken all the first round picks to the stage to greet Roger Goodell. That would have I'm... been that would have been really good, don't you think? I mean, thank God these guys that got drafted are in great physical condition because you needed it. I mean, Hannah Steelman at NC State. Does it run as far as it took for any of these guys to walk to the stage to get their hug in their jersey? And, Holy and, mackerel, it took for I was like, oh, you, you got to be kidding me. Does this ever end? How many hallways do and, they walk down before they finally get to the stage? It was like, it was comical last night. It really was. Well, it was comical. And, and when you were... And when you were 12 picks after you thought you were going to go, Mac Jones decided he was going to speed walk it. Well, when hey, New listen, England picked him 15th last night. So, this you know, is hey, why, look. This is why Trevor Lawrence is so good. He is so smart. He he saw the diagram of where he was going to sit in the VIP <laughs> lounge and said, you know what, I'm going to save my I'll legs. Never get there. Yeah, I'm going to save I'll my legs for my there. rookie year. I'm going to stay home with my yeah. family and friends. I'm not walking six miles to get to Roger Goodell. I'm just going to hang out here in the uh, in the chill room and hang out with my buds. That was crazy last night. But nevertheless, what? Yeah. Big picture, we threw the number at five yesterday, over and under for the ACC in the first round. If you went over, you were a winner because six was the lucky number. Yeah, it was. And and obviously Trevor went one to Jacksonville. uh, And then the ACC was put on hold. And it was funny, Dave Archer, uh, Pac, who you know, he and I have worked together a long time, used to do the ACC package uh back in the old days did a great job arch and i were talking about at some point there'd be a run on the acc well it happened from 18 to 30 five of the 12 picks were from the conference jalen phillips went off the board first i was not surprised there a little surprised at the drop in caleb farley tennessee taking him at 22 his teammate christian darisaw right behind him a perfect fit by the way in minnesota then i think the real intriguing surprise of the first round was Travis Etienne also joining Lawrence in Jacksonville at 25. And then we closed the night with one that did surprise me. I'd almost thought that Gregory Rousseau had fallen out of the first round. And I thought the uh, the opt-out was going to cost him. I really did. I thought it was going to cost him a first round. 
uh, spot. But he did get in on the back end at 30, so congratulations to Rousseau and the five other guys selected in the first round. Tonight, rounds two and three start at 7 o'clock on ESPN. It will be a big night for the ACC tonight. This is going to be uh, Javante Williams, Boogie Basham, and I'm just getting started. I mean, there are going to be a bunch of guys that come flying off the board tonight uh, who played at ACC institutions. Jeremiah Awusu koromoa is the one pack that was almost universally across the board on first round mocks last night that did not get drafted. So we'll see what happens here uh, once we get cranked up about 7 o'clock tonight. Well, they should have listened to you. I mean, I'm, listen, I know McShay and, and Mel Kuyper and all these uh, draft experts uh, spend years and years and years breaking it down. But you you were spot on yesterday in our True and False uh, brought to you by Dish. And I, I disagreed with you, but you were right. And that was that uh, Trevor Lawrence uh, would have a partner from Clemson join him in the Jacksonville Jags. I, not only were you right, you were right on the first night and ironically, you give me the ETN Trevor Lawrence uh, marriage again as they now go from Clemson to Jacksonville. And it's the first time since dirt that you've had a quarterback running back duo drafted in the same by the same team in the first round of the common draft. That's never, ever happened before, but yeah. it did last night. And so the folks down there in Duval County are going to be excited seeing those Tiger Paul dudes come rolling into town because they are both really, really talented. Yeah, I, look, I think the ETN pick is uh, a blend of a couple things. Um, and let me kind of qualify this. I think there is an advantage when you're doing what Jacksonville is doing that if you can pick guys in a battery package, skill set together, like, for instance, had, let's say, Justin Ross come out and he'd been available last night. Justin Ross, Trevor Lawrence. You talking? See what I'm talking about with the synergy of those positions. Same thing with Travis Etienne. Look, I know James Robinson had a thousand yard year for him last year. He was an undrafted free agent. He was one of the really good stories in the NFL last season. But Jacksonville was a bad football team. Okay, I mean they won a game, and so I guess what I'm getting at is if you're Urban Meyer and you're Trent Baalke, who are the front office of that organization now and you have an opportunity to take a guy that you also saw at the pro day uh, after Trevor's pro day, you know what you're getting in both guys, and your confidence level gets a little higher. I think there is some value in doing that. Number one, it gives your quarterback a ton of confidence. Number two, it's going to help everybody around you that these guys have that kind of synergy, if you will, that second, third nature about one another. Um, And let's be honest. How many times do I hear you talk about there are three really good teams in college football every year? We all kind of know where they are. Columbus, Ohio, Clemson, South Carolina, and Tuscaloosa, right? Well, in Clemson's case, if you're Jacksonville, you got an opportunity to take two guys off one of the best teams in the last five years in college football. You do it. I mean, look how many guys from Alabama went last night. That's a good football team. It's been a good football team. Uh, so I'm, I'm delighted for Travis Etienne. The other thing about it is ETN's a first-round pick who doesn't have to worry about being the headline guy, Pac. Right. Think about that. Travis ETN can go down there, and ta- and he's a h- quiet, humble kid from Louisiana who wants some farmland and some animals and things like that in life. And to me, Travis ETN's the perfect guy to be the uh, to be the sidecar with Trevor Lawrence, and I, I think it could work out beautifully for both of them. What are you going to do when uh, Cornell Powell and uh, Amari Rogers are picked by Jacksonville? Are we just going to just send the team plane up there and just go, hey, all of you come down there in one swell, fell swoop? I mean, I, I'm just saying because they're they're going to get picked somewhere. I, yeah, don't don't push it that that you won't have another one down there. Let's put it that way. I look. You can get your eyes full when you go there to watch a pro day. Oh, yeah. Uh, whether you're just watching Trevor throw it or watch those other cats go to work, um, you can get your eyes full. And I, I'm not going to be surprised if uh, Tigers have a couple guys go tonight in rounds two and three, uh, like I said, in this ACC hall that I think will start in earnest. I think it'll start early, too. It could be 33 right at the beginning, um, 34, 35, where Atlanta picks. I mean, right there early, I think you'll see some ACC guys. Uh, but a couple shout outs too. Um, you know, Miami puts a couple guys in, Virginia Tech, a couple guys, Clemson, a couple guys. Uh, 47 right. consecutive drafts now, 47 in a row for the Miami mm-hmm. Hurricanes uh, in the NFL draft. Strong number. Uh, Virginia Tech, 
A couple guys last night. First time an offensive player selected since 2012 with David Wilson. Uh, the Hokies, 27 consecutive years putting a player yeah. in the NFL draft. So those uh, streaks continue on that front. And uh, for Clemson, again, Clemson, Bama, and Florida. Those three schools are the only three in the country who have put um, first-round picks in eight of the last nine drafts. Right? Let's give you a heads mm-hmm. up on that. So, again, yep. it's a cool night. Again, I wish all those guys the very best. We loved watching them play, whether they're ACC players or anything else. A dream of a lifetime for those 32 young guys. And, uh, again, you, you root for all these guys. I mean, I'm, I'm not a Sunday snob. So, I don't, I mean, listen, I, if everybody wins, cool. Doesn't Excuse matter me? to me. I'm not a snob. Excuse me? I am not a Sunday snob. It, it's on. I don't have any skin in the game. No, I know you're the voice of the Falcons. We know that. I mean, I'm up here right. in Charlotte. We acknowledge you guys. I just twice got a lot a year. of credit for being right a few minutes ago. I no, want I gave to value you props. that for a moment too. Uh, no, yeah. I, I told you. I mean, Mel. Ki- I didn't hear Mel Kiper or, or McShay tell you that uh, ETN was going to be tied in with Trevor Lawrence. I didn't hear any of that. I heard it from you. Are we glossing over the fact that I told you Trey Lance was a smoke? Uh, that Mac Jones was a smoke screen for Trey Lance at three two when I said that last night, yesterday. I'm giving you all the credit in the world. I mean, you are the. <laughs> there's only 32 play-by-play voices in the NFL, and I work with one. Uh, there are only 32 of you. It's like uh, well, there's 32 NFL owners, and there's 32 NFL play-by-play guys. Small list. It. Yeah. So you know, when they talk, yeah, you better pay different attention. Different financials, but other than that, it was yeah, good. I didn't, I, I didn't say you're making Arthur Blank money. I didn't say anything. No, but you no, know no. what? Let me All tell you good. something, dude. You got Clifford D. Cat, and Blank does it. So that's got to count for something. You got Vicky, oh, and Blank does it. That definitely counts for something. There you go. All right. Uh, we got a fun show today. Uh, Virginia Tech men's soccer coach Mike Brizendine will be here in this first uh, right at 815. And then Andrea Adelson joins us at 830. We got to clean up a little business on this name, image, and likeness to have wow. the state of Florida pack. Wow, 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 wow. Got, got a few things going on there. Holy mackerel. Uh, I should also say at 8 o'clock this morning. Oh, this could be great. We're going to replay last year's Packer and Durham Derby, which was part of the world-famous Q series that some of you may or may not have seen. <laughs> See this right here? That's part of the reason. Yeah. This, this, was, this was our entire Packer and Durham ACC Network budget while we were on quarantine. It involved a barbecue skewer, which is right there. I spent 10 cents on some yellow cardboard, and this is a Packer and Durham coaster, which, by the way, you can't buy. You know why? Because there's no merchandise for us. And so we turned this into the Q series because it literally our budget was about 25 cents on the Q series. But you will not, not want to miss 8 a.m. this morning. Promise you. Right. So the Packer and Durham Derby that does not feature uh, Charles C. Canty in a hat interviewing a jockey. That's does right. Does not feature Dave Johnson with the race call. Uh, you'll get the replay of last year's Packer and Durham Derby coming up at 8 o'clock. We're excited to show that to you. Then, 9 o'clock hour, 9.30 to be exact, the president of Clemson University together. will be here. Get your act together is right. Uh, Jim Clements is here, a new member of the college football playoff board. We're certainly going to discuss that. And we're going to discuss any late fees that Mr. Packer may have to stroke a check for to get his youngest daughter Mm -mm. graduated from Clemson. I let me tell you something. Late fees that might be coming in. Found one this week. We uh, owed uh, Redfern, which is the health services uh, medical spot, 45 bucks this week covered we are green light for next week's graduation well, ceremony we are green light we're gonna for let Clemson the president University. tell us that we're not just going to go on the word of you we're going to go on the word of the president you who bring can him check on. the account before he joins us at 9 30 you bring on the big man we are good to go we are looking forward to watching our daughter shake his hand and some big <laughs> big fat white dude in the stands going yes <laughs> no more out of state tuition. We are we are one happy bunch in the Packer household. The Packer and Durham podcast. Here's Mark Packer and Wes Durham. Packer and Durham on a Friday morning. 
That is we not had so right. much. We had so much fun with the NFL <laughs> draft last night. We've decided that's what we're going to do on a Friday morning. You bet. We are drafting ACC football players that are coming back for the twenty one season. All right, we are going to give you our version of the ACC draft. You ready, Wes? Ready to roll? Sure. Yeah. You I lead. get to pick first. Yes, sir. Of course. Right. You go first. Here's, here's what we're going to do. We're going to pick one quarterback. Each of us are going to pick one quarterback, two running backs, two wide receivers, one tight end, and two offensive linemen. Okay. Okay. Yep. It's almost like an eval chart, if you will. Um, I'll start on the offensive side. Pack will go first on defense. And I am going to take Sam Howell no. with the first pick. No. No surprise here. Uh, player of the Year candidate, Heisman Trophy candidate. Record for touchdown passes in his first two years in the ACC. Does bring back for his junior year uh, some new faces. Brings back some guys in the offensive line. Could be a bit of an orientation process. Early for the Tar Heels, but I'll still take Sam Howell number one, Pack. I love that pick. Uh, I tell you what, now, I think this, of all the position groups, this one might be the deepest one we've got in the league. Mm -hmm. Uh, With the second pick, uh, Mr. Goodell, could you get out of my chair, please? Thank you. Um, (laughs) With the second pick, um, boy, I got so many options here. I'm going to go Deere King. I'm going to say completely healthy, good to go. I love Pickett, love Dracovic, um, love DJ. I mean, the list is long here. Uh, I, I'm going to go mm-hmm. Derek King. Uh, explosive, uh, coming back for more. I know he's bummed out about this name, image, and likeness change in the state of Florida. We'll address that later. But uh, this guy's dynamic, puts up great numbers. And if the Canes are going to get back to being the Canes, this guy's got to be great. And he showed you some of that last yep. year. So I uh, love Sam Howitt, one. Uh, I think 1A is Derek King. So there you go. All right. Good job. Uh, we're going to move to running back. By the way, I, Phil Jakovic could have been on this list. Kenny no Pickett could have been on this yeah. list. That's right. Uh, this is where the ACC can flex a little muscle, by the way. Brennan Armstrong could have been on the list. I mean, it, list. Malik Cunningham, take your pick. Um, but Sam Howell and De'Ara King, pretty strong. All right, we go to running back, and this one's probably going to surprise some people. I, they're, two guys, they're two guys. You're going to go first year, pack? Okay. I'll, I'll let you go. I'll let you go first in offense. No, I'll go, go first in it. No, I, I like you going first because I'm, I'm curious to see where you're right. going to go because this is a tough okay. one, I think. I'm going to take uh, – one may be a surprise. I'm not sure two is. The first guy I'm, I'm going to take is a sophomore running back at Georgia Tech. I'm going to take Jameer Gibbs. Mm, that's what I, was uh, I think the offensive line will be better at Georgia Tech. Uh, he switched from 21 to 1, by the way. Um, and I think he will be the one. If Georgia Tech's going to have a big year, he's going to be a lot of it. Um, I think he's really good, and when healthy, I think he's sensational. Um, so looking forward to watching Jameer Gibbs for Georgia Tech. I'm going to go off the ledger here with my second pick, um, and we may or may not have video on this. I'm going to take Bam Knight of NC State as my second running back. I, um, I'm pretty excited about Bam Knight. I, I think NC State's uh, sneaky in the Atlantic. I told you that after we did their spring game. I think they got a lot of depth on both sides of the ball. And I'm pretty excited about where Bam Knight is. Uh, didn't go through the spring drills. Didn't play in the spring game, I should say. I think he's a guy that could have a big year. He and Devin Leary, quite a combination, I think, for Dave Doran and the Wolfpack. So, Jameer Gibbs and Bam Knight are my two running backs. I like those. Uh, you, you stole the two I was going to go with, but that's okay. Uh, th- this, to me, is the most difficult category uh, because you kind of lost some star power with ETN and so forth. However, I- I'm going to go a little bit off the grid, too. I'm going to go down with my man, Mr. Harris. From the University mm. of Miami. Because I tell you what, when he was good, he was really good. He'd run by yeah. you. He'd run through you. Uh, so I'm going to go De'Ara King and Harris, the one-two combination for the Canes. Uh, and I tell you what now, Miami's got two or three other guys that I like too. Uh, I love their backfield. So uh, I just like the power and, and the speed with Harris at 23. And I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to go Duke on you. D-U-K-E. All right? Mateo Durant. I'm going to go with Durant from Duke. I, I think yeah. he is flying underneath the radar – and Duke's not getting a whole lot of attention. They had a tough year last year. But I tell you what, 21's a problem now. 
21 can catch it. 21 can run with it. And uh, when he gets in the yep. open field, good night. See you later. So I'm going to go Harris-Durant combination uh, with my running back picks. But I think this is the most difficult position group to choose from when we do our uh, 21 Ooh. ACC draft. I think the running back one's tough. There's others you could throw in the mix, and I'd say, yeah, good pick. Um, but that one's tough. All right. Wide receivers for me, the two guys I'm going to take, one reaffirmed his spot last year, last weekend in the spring game. When I saw Phil Jerkovic throw a dime in a closed coverage situation to Zay Flowers, I'm like, yep, that's my guy. Yeah. I – this guy can take the top off the place. Um, I think he's a much better player this year. He was sensational last year, so I really like Zay Flowers of Boston College. The other guy, is, and here's another one coming out of the, the woodwork a little bit. This is probably somebody you're not thinking of, but if you go back and look at the numbers, you'd get excited for this year, and that's Ja'Cory Robert, Roberson of, uh, of Wake Forest. Uh, got off to a great start last year. And I thought never let up. Did a really good job staying consistent throughout the campaign. You know, we don't know a lot about the Deeks coming out of the spring pack, but you got a guy slinging it and catching it. This combination of Hartman and Roberson, I think Dave Clawson, again, how many times do you say it, does such a great job getting his team ready. Be interesting to watch them too. Okay, I'm going a different route than you. Uh, my first pick, and again, knock on wood that he's healthy and good to go. Justin Ross. Did we all forget about Justin Ross at Clemson? Because mm. <laughs> let me tell you something. Uh, the t- really, the Tigers' top three wide receivers didn't play last year. I hate to bring bad news to the league, uh, but n- we all forgot this dude right here now. He did not play last year. He's supposed to get his last, I guess, medical clearance coming up. Uh, but I think number mm. eight's the best wide receiver in the, in the conference, and I don't think it's close when healthy, in my opinion. Uh, so I'm going Justin Ross, uh, number one, and nice. I'm gonna I, I'm gonna switch gears because I've changed my mind four or five times in the next pick. I didn't know where you were gonna go. I'm gonna go to Pitt. I think Jordan Addison showed me something. Kenny Pickett Ooh. is going to sling it, and Pitt's going to score. And Jordan Addison yep. was the man. Now I, I think Jordan Addison is a dude at Pittsburgh. So I'm gonna go Justin Ross and Jordan Addison for my wide receivers. All right, good call there. Tight ends. I'll take a tiger there. They got a bunch mm, of them, one? too. Yeah, which one? Uh, well, I'm going to go with Braden Galloway because I think uh, I think Braden Galloway is going to line up in a lot of different places what they want to do offensively for Tony Elliott. So I'm going to go with Galloway. I thought he had moments and flashes last year, and I'm excited to see kind of where they, where they package him up this year offensively. Gosh, between um... – Davis Allen and Lay and this guy. I mean, they got three athletic, nasty tight ends, mm. and the freshman's supposed to be great too. So, you know, what, what's new? Clemson's got weapons, again, like crazy. Uh, all right, I didn't know which way you were going to go on tight ends, so I'm going to go hokey, hokey, hokey high here. Mm. Uh, James Mitchell's coming back. He can run. He can catch. Uh, I love his game. He's been on the show. Uh, an interesting guy to talk to. But uh, I'm a big fan of 82 because I think 82 can get you in the end zone from anywhere on the football field. And I know Justin Fuente was thrilled to death to see her that 82 is coming back uh, for the 21 season. So that's my guy right there, James Mitchell. All right. Hokey, hokey, hokey high. Um, You mentioned that, you know, running back might have been tough. I I think offensive line is a nightmare. And we're only going to pick two each here. So we may not have guard, center, tackle, ironed out, that kind of thing for you. But here's the deal. I think the ACC's got really good offensive line play. I'm going to go with Alec Lindstrom of Boston College, who's going to be a four-year guy or a three-year guy for sure. I think he potentially could be a really high draft pick next year like his brother was yep. uh, in Atlanta who went in the first round. Uh, but I'm going to take Lindstrom for starters. I could have taken Tyler Vrabel on this offensive line. I could have taken Zion Johnson in the offensive line. Hey, you're picking Collins. my guys. Be careful. Okay. Hang on. All right. The next one I'm going to take is Packer and Durham favorite, Iki Ikwanu of NC State. I, I just think the, the potential here is through the roof for this guy. Just watch – the destruction that takes place at left tackle for the Wolfpack. We're in the blood red jerseys. Look at that one. Here's another one. And if we put the Miami play on here, 
the car crash against Bubba Bolden we may not have. But look at him. Seriously? And by the way, show favorite because he ate pancakes on the show. Yeah. Which is really kind of what we're all about. Yeah, I like your two picks. Uh, there's uh, You were rattling off some names I had on my original list uh, as well. But the two <laughs> guys you picked, I, if, if I had a chance to go first, those would have been the first two I'd have picked two. I'm going to go North Carolina. Okay. I mean, North Carolina's got their entire offensive line back. Yep. I think there's a couple guys you could pick from that group. But Big Josh, uh, Izudu, um, I'm, I'm going with mm-hmm. him. He, he can play on my team any day of the week. Uh, I think he's the problem. Uh, he's going to knock somebody in the next week. Uh, North Carolina's offensive line, really talented last year, and they are all back, along with Sam Howell. That's why everybody's high on this team, and rightfully so. Yeah. But the big man up front, uh, again, I like this North Carolina yeah. offensive line, period. But he would be on my list. And I'm going to switch gears with you. I'm going to go uh, just pure nasty. I'm going to go with oh, a trash-talking, dirty – and I don't mean that to be disrespectful, but I like a little nastiness with an offensive lineman. And I like Brock Hoffman from Virginia Tech. I, know you I do. do. <laughs> I like him a lot uh, because you know what? Yeah, I know he may get he may get a couple flags for doing some stupid stuff, but I'll tell you what he's going to do. He's going to come fight you for sixty. And uh, I right. like that Virginia Tech offensive line last year too. Now, so I'm going to go Brock Hoffman as my guy. That's just going to sit there and make you. He's going to bloody your nose for sixty minutes. So that's going to be yeah. my pick on the offensive line. Those are good choices. I tell you, offensive line's going to be a fun area to watch Yep. as we get the season underway in September. Uh, real quick, here's the checklist, and I'm sure our good friends at social media will be putting this up later today, Pack, which will be a lot like accounting, which will be fun for everybody just to get mashed with. Of course. Uh, I went Hal, Gibbs, Knight, Flowers, Roberson, Galloway, Lindstrom, Iquano. Packer did a good job. This is this is and Mark's going to go first with defense. And there's your favorite picture again, by the way. I hate that picture. I, I, I tell you what, Harris. I like that picture as much as I like watching these NFL dudes walk ten miles to get to the stage last night. <laughs> God, so bad. I really like your offense. I love Izudu and Brock Hoffman. And we had Lindstrom and Iquanu. We could take you or me, and I think be okay with those five. So, uh, by the way, just go. a correction, uh, Jordan Addison, that's Pittsburgh, yeah. not Virginia Tech, because I do not want to get pounded <laughs> on social media, all right? Because it will happen, and it'll be like, I, oh, know, hey, I, I know what I'm talking about. On accounting. Don't, don't, don't kill me, social media people. Please don't. Packer and Durham. This is the Packer and Durham Podcast. You can rip into these picks later on. I know it. We're yeah, ready oh, yeah. for you. We're ready. Uh, thanks to Drew Brooks, Josh Macri for getting all this stuff put together for us for the draft. And how nice is it, Pack, to welcome back Jen Milkovitz as our director today. I know it. Been it's a great. while. She's been off doing big time shows with lots of people, personnel and you know, viewership and stuff. Jen must have been punished. She must have done something terrible because she's been punished. That's right. And she's been now demoted for one day to do this show. That's it. Back it's over here. It's great having Jen back. She's great. Hanging out with the fun show. That's, That's right. It. Kids table. <laughs> left the, kids, the left the adult the table. table. She's yes. back over here to the kids table. That's it. Yep. All right. Over let's go. The kids table. We're going to have apple slices later. That's exactly right. <laughs> Everybody share. Uh, all right, it. it's time for D E F E N S E defense. Let's go, Big D. You ready to roll? I'm leading. Yep. I'm not messing right. around. I am not going to mess around with you on defense. Defensive right. line, four defensive linemen, four defensive linemen. You got to pick. Let me tell you something. I am not going to leave Pickens County. How about that? I am not leaving oh Pickens God. County. <laughs> I am going to go with the entire defensive front for Brent Venables' guys. They are going oh. to be filthy. You're taking the whole front? All of them. I'm taking Xavier Thomas. I'm taking BB. I'm taking Tyler Davis. And I'm taking Miles Murphy. And I'll tell you what, if any of you out there in ACC <laughs> land go, that's the most ridiculous thing I've ever heard. Well, I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to laugh at you this fall because that group is going to be nasty. All of them. Cross the board, Tiger Paws. And they're going to say, hey, you know, that guy went to Clemson. He's so biased. That's right. 
I am absolutely biased. <laughs> Because let me tell you something. I watch football, and the defensive front at Clemson this year is going to be okay. tremendous. All right. More highlights. Yeah, yeah. more highlights. Get that all okay. over you. Yeah, here we go. Uh, okay. Everybody in the country right. wants those four guys. That, that, that's how all I'm right. going to describe them. Everybody okay. in America would take all four of them. That's how good they well, are. Well, I – and you know what? There are going to be some other lists this year of all ACC in the preseason that may actually also feature all four guys as for whatever the selection is. I mean, They're you're not going to be the only one. Okay. You're not going to be the only one. However, let me offer four others for consideration just to <laughs> kind of offset the flag that's just been raised over there on the, on the Packers side. It. That's who they uh, are. All right. I'm going to start with Daniel Joseph of NC State. I think he's had a really good spring. I think the Penn State transfer did some really good things at times last year. Uh, kind of excited about where Daniel Joseph may go for the Wolfpack. Uh, I want to go next to Amari Barno of Virginia Tech. I think this guy put together a whale of a year last year for the Hokies. Uh, statistically very consistent. It seemed like night in, night out. Uh, look at the length. Look at the athleticism. Look at the ability to track down. I Mari Barno might be the – there might be something under the hood there people should get excited you. about. He's a player. Um, I'm going to go to Chapel Hill here. This is one of the guys – Roddy Jones got me kind of keyed in on Ray Vahasik as a nose guard playing for Jay Bateman. He's a 0-1 almost on every snap – and guy knows how to push through now. Maybe not the biggest cat, but uses leverage great. Uh, looking forward to watching Ray Bahasic play. And then my last one is is a guy. Uh, I know Narduzzi's watching. You know, we know Narduzzi kind of checks us out, right, in Pittsburgh. So here's a guy, kind of a quiet spring. Didn't play in the spring game last year. This is a disruptor, Kalijah Cansey. I'm telling you, Pac, single digit. Look at this. Look, bang, two guys. Oh, there's DeVito. I mean, Kalaja Kansi's ready to ride now. Pretty excited about I, him in Pittsburgh I, this fall. I like your guys. I do. Um, but I'm going to tell you, Wes, in my opinion, if you lined up all eight of those guys, you said, hey, let's go pick. I, I think the first one yeah. you're going to pick have a tiger paw on I know. Helmet. I got you. I, I really I do. I, I, and I, I want right. it to be a little more diverse. But when you start looking at who's back in 21, you're like, oh, my God, he's back. Oh, my God. He's I, you're back. not going to be the only one. You're not going to be the only one. All right. Trust me. Linebackers. Okay. Ready? Yeah. Uh, go I, anywhere here. This is a deep class, too, by yeah, the way. I know. Uh, I think the guy who's a headhunter, and I mean that again in all positivity, is your man at NC State, uh, Peyton Wilson, who will line up and tackle anything that moves. If it moves, he hits it. It's kind of like oh. that guy right there, forty-seven. All right, uh, and 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 we you know, somebody may add Skalski to this list because he's oh, certainly up there for conversation. But uh, Peyton Wilson is, in my opinion, the guy that is everywhere. He is the ubiquitous linebacker of the Atlantic Coast Conference. So check him mm -hmm. out. And I'm going to bring up another guy. And I'm not saying, and I don't mean this to be disrespectful. I don't think he's the second best linebacker, but I'm bringing him up on my list just because I like saying his name. Servassier Dennis. I think any, <laughs> and I said it last year that anytime I check into a hotel, I'm going to check in as the alias of Servassier. Uh, I just love the name. And on top of that, he's a really, really good player. So oh. there you have it. Really good player. Yeah. A really good player. So... I like those two. That's good picks. Good picks. Uh, all right. I'm going to take uh, an NC State linebacker as well. I'm going to take one of the guys. Peyton Wilson is kind of a tone setter. but the I'm taking two aged, crusty veterans. I like it. I'm going to take like us. Isaiah Moore <laughs> of the Wolfpack to start because yeah. I think Isaiah Moore is – You got every team's got to have an Isaiah Moore. Because you get a guy who can hold the point of attack. He lets everybody else run wild because he understands 
kind of where he's got to be on every snap and gets everybody else in place. And I, I think his productivity coincides with the emergence of Wilson. And then I'm going to go back for his 13th year at Clemson. I just think James Skalski is, is fun to watch. I think he plays the game. He's passionate as get out. And I think at the end of the day, he might be the straw that stirs all of it for Clemson. Not just those four guys Packers fond of up front. I think he may help stir it on offense too. Um, and when he didn't play last year, it made a difference. And I, am for one, am glad to see him back. I think he's a fun guy. I know he wants to coach, and I'm glad he held off on that coaching career just one more year. So I'm, uh, I like James Skalski for sure. Like all those guys too. All right, defensive backs, I make this short and sweet. Uh, give me Bubba Bolden all day long at Miami. He will hit you, and I love safeties that will hit you. And I am a big, big fan of Bubba Bolden. And, man, I tell you, there's so many guys to pick from here. Uh, only because he kept winning our wide receiver U award, I'm going to go with Mr. Booth at Clemson. Andrew because Booth. Because I'm a good grief. Yeah. I mean, enough. And then in the spring game, Wes, you did the game. He made another crazy catch. So I, I'm again, going to go yeah. with cover. That here goes Superman. It didn't matter if it was against Pitt, against Virginia, or against his own team in the spring game. Look at that ridiculous right. play. What are we talking about? So I'm going to go Bubba Bolden and Andrew Booth. One and one A. I, all right. You want to pick two more? Do you want to go two more? I will. Four DBs? Are we only doing two? Only, only two. two? Okay. We're running out Great. of time. All right. Um, I'm going to take two guys. One is Brandon Sebastian of Boston College. Uh, veteran guys mm. made plays in, in his career at BC. I thought he started to emerge a little bit more for Jeff Halfley a season ago. Um, be curious to, to have an evaluation from Coach in July about where he thinks his secondary might be. Uh, but Sebastian is a guy who can – certainly gear up the back end for Boston College. And then the one I'm going to take next, remember with Dino Babers the other day, we talked about some of these young guys that he had had to play last year because of injury. Uh, you had Melifonwu, you had Trill Williams, you had Cisco back there. But he had to pull the trigger on some guys. And the one I'm most excited about at Syracuse in the secondary is Garrett Williams. Um, and long before he had the pick six of Trevor Lawrence last year at Clemson, I thought Williams was a bit of a playmaker for the Orange. And then he started putting numbers together in the secondary. There's a pick against Louisville. He had another one against Clemson, as I said a moment ago. Here's the one that he uh, picked Lawrence on and, and took it back. I think the guy is very exciting. And not that Andre Sisco wasn't a good player, but you got another one up there in central New York that I think can really make some things happen with Garrett Williams. Like so, it. now we've completed the defense of the Packer and Durham draft of 2021 football in the ACC. Do we have a quick check of the board here? Want to make sure we got everybody lined up and uh, and ready to go on the board. Uh, and we, oh, by the way, we have not forgotten special teams. Oh, no. Us, by the way, Packer. Oh, no. We got picks. When we come back, we will, let's look at the board here. Make sure you got it right. I, I, I don't know how your board's hard to do. All you got to do is type Clemson up front. That's right. Why wouldn't you? They're going to probably be the number one ranked team in the country. You know why? Because they're going to punch you in the face on game day. Uh, and the reason why, that defensive line is nasty. Every one of those dudes. Baller, 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 baller. Peyton Wilson, in case you get by that line, he will tackle you. And then Servassier, Dennis, has the coolest name in the league and a player. And Bubba Bolden and Andrew Booth don't even think about it. Don't even think about it. Here's Mark Packer and Wes Durham. Our ACC draft continues, and I'm sure it will be ripped to shreds on social media, but we simply don't care. Don't care. But we're not done, Wes. It's Friday. It's right. Friday. Exactly. Yeah, there you go. Uh, all right, special teams. We go kicker punter. Punters lean love too, right? No doubt. Uh, for, me, for me, it's easy. Lou Headley held off on going back to Australia to hang drywall for a year. So the big man from down under is back at it from Miami. This is just unbelievable what this cat does. Remember now, he was a Ray guy finalist to Presley Harvin of Georgia Tech who won the award. I fully expect Headley to be near the top of the list again this year. So he's the punter. We got to get Lou on the show, by the way. Lou is overdue a visit on this program. 
He and Justin Fuente. Just say he and Justin Fuente, long overdue. But, all right. Place kicker after a subpar 19 and struggles mm. early in 20. This guy came back and finished in a flurry a season ago. Mm. The battery of snapper, holder, and kicker for Nick Skiba was really important, and they had to work through some of the weird offseason we had a season ago. And when they got it tuned up, Pack, they were rolling people. I love Nick Skiba, by the way. I'm, you know, across the 50, he's in range. I took your two guys, didn't I? No, you did not. You took my punter, but you didn't take my place kicker. Uh, My punter, um, now I've got to go to plan B, but at least there is a plan B for me. Uh, I'm going to NC State. I'm going to the red and white of NC State. Uh, Trenton Gill, who's really been a cool story, and he's just kicking it the next week, uh, which has been tremendous. Mm -hmm. Um, that That was a weapon last year for Dave Dorn now. This dude yep. knew what was going on. But I, I'm with you with Headley. Headley's a great story. And anybody tatted like that, it's a punter, that big, hanging drywall, you know he's, he's our kind of guy. Uh, so I'm with you on that. So I'm going to go Trenton Gill. That would be my backup pick right there because he's had a great career so far. Place kicker, uh, I would if you said to me last year who would I would have picked, I would have picked Skiba last year. But I'm going to yeah. go B.T. Potter. And I think he even proved it in the spring game that you did. Uh, this guy can oh, kick yeah. it from a trillion yards out, and he is a old man too. He'd been there for a hundred years, it seems like. So I'm going to go <clears> BT <throat> Potter, kicking field goals for me. There you have it. Good, good choices. And now with Lawrence gone, best hair on the team. Uh, could very well be. You know, I, I don't. Yeah. I'm not critical of uh, people's hair, and uh, there's a reason for that. <laughs> All right, that's our uh, Packer and Durham 2021 ACC draft. Uh, at the tail end of the show yesterday, we ran something. We're going to replay it here. It's really good. And a credit to everybody involved in our our group here that helps us get on the air every morning. Uh, Drew and Josh obviously lead Lumberjacks. They, they oversee all of this. And Matt did this. He's off that back row crowd that we talk about occasionally. Talented group. Um, oh, yeah. Talented group. Far more talented than the people in front of the camera. No so, doubt. We put a they put a collage together of video of draft eligible and guys who we think may have their name called this week in the NFL to the world famous question What's your toughest class? I ask this question to every student athlete. Since your time at the University of Virginia at NC State, at the University of Louisville. What is the hardest class that you've ever had? It's a tough question. They told me to be prepared for this. The thing is, the hardest class I ever had, I don't even remember the name of. I'm not going to lie to you, probably Spanish. Come on, stop. (laughs) No, he got nothing. He got nothing. He got nothing. I know one of my other teammates said that. I didn't want to say that, but it's true. Freshman and sophomore year, I was a mechanical engineer major. I took this computer programming class. It was ridiculous. I got a a math class my sophomore year. My finite math class. That class was different. He just made it so difficult for no reason, to be honest. I just felt like the whole the whole math was just in a different language. We didn't use much numbers in the math class. I switched to business, but um, good move. Yeah, you I did. Say, <laughs> <laughs> I had a public policy class last semester that that really hurt me. I had to do so many papers, so many papers, and the papers be real long. I don't know what you could talk about for ten pages. I did good. I did good, mom and dad. I did good in the class. No question. No question. Econ one on one. It taught me that econ is not in my future at all. It's supply and demand. You demand the ball, Coach <laughs> Mack supplies the ball, man, and off to the races we go. That's how it works. Give me the rock. That's econ 101 right there. Those guys. Now, that question has turned into an animal onto itself. And, and, and to be honest what? with you, the student athletes do such a good job answering it because, listen, if you go into college, you know that there's always been one class that you just go, oh my gosh, how did I find myself in this thing? And how am I going to get out of it? And so that has really turned into a, a fun question on the show. It really has. How about Rashad Weaver? It was so hard, I don't even know the Forgot name. Forgot it. Of it. Don't even want to remember what it was. Don't even want to remember it. Yeah, that's it.
And I, then, had, and then I had some when, guy ask me on Twitter uh, yesterday. Yeah. As a matter of fact, he said, Pac, what was your hardest class at Clemson? And I told him, I said, I don't recall the number of the class. It was three something something. Um, but it was a uh, it was a microeconomic theory class. And what made it so hard is the professor um, could look at you on the board. He would write you know, the graph behind you and talk to you. And he would write like this, Wes. He would look at you and be able to do the graph. And I was so mesmerized by this guy going, how is it possible that he could give me the supply and demand? And, and I mean, it to degrees of like, like, how does he do that? How can you sit there and look at me right in the eye and on the chalkboard? It was perfect. I was like, it's the most unbelievable thing. That class wore me out, though. That was a tough deal at Clemson. But we got Did through it. I survived. I, I took it in the summer uh, when I was down there. Oh, it was a yeah. summer class. Thank God, because it, it was a grinder. Mm. Uh, even in summer school, it was a grinder. Uh, but I got through yep. it and uh, again, got out in four years. Graduated right on the time. old t-shirt, shorts, and flip flops class, right in the summer. Well, no disrespect. That's kind of how I showed up anyhow for class. Uh, I I, uh, <laughs> I know you find that hard to believe that uh, I was not well dressed going to class uh, in a baseball hat and uh, a good attitude. But uh, that was the deal. Microeconomics theory. That theory. was the hard one, right? Microeconomic yeah. theory. Yep. The Packer and Durham Podcast. Hey, what's up, everybody? This is LG Granderson here to tell you about my new podcast from ABC Audio called Life Out Loud. This show is all about preserving the history and honoring the contributions of the LGBTQ community. Each week, I'll talk to some of the most fascinating people paving the way toward a more inclusive world. These conversations can get heavy, but this show is also going to be filled with so much joy. And I mean, after all, we are called gay people, right? So got to be some happiness in there somewhere. Check out Life Out Loud with me, LZ Granderson, wherever you get your podcasts.